Freshman point guard, they love to move the ball side to side. Here's Gabe Kesher, one of the big transfers, and immediately connects on his first attempt. He has played against Iowa in the past, a three-year starter. At Fran, we've both been inside the Hilton Coliseum many, many games. We haven't seen an atmosphere, a crowd, an energy quite like this in a number of years. Your officials tonight, Keith Kimball, Burt Smith, Brooks Wells. We are ready to go, and Iowa State in front of their home crowd controls the opening tip in their cardinal red and gold uniform. Freshman point guard, they love to move the ball side to side. Here's Gabe Kesher, one of the big transfers, and immediately connects on his first attempt. He has played against Iowa in the past, a three-year starter at Minnesota. He and Brockington, former Big Ten guys. And this is strength on strength, one of the best offenses in Iowa, one of the best defenses in the Cyclones, Frank. No question. This team does not turn the ball over. Seven turnovers a game. Here's Murray's first shot off the mark. And here comes freshman guard Tyrese Hunter, who has been a handful for the opposition of the Cyclones so far. That one off the mark, rebounded by Rebracha. This team will push it. A lot of Here's offensive the weapons. Son, Patrick McCaffrey off the mark. Brand, we talk about the Cyclones defense. What do we expect from their offense tonight? A lot of, a lot of ball movement, uh, side to side, a lot of touches. If this guy's making shots, it's important. Tyrese Hunter was 0 for his last 10 from three before hitting that one. It's not why he's on the floor, but he certainly gives them a bonus score. And the first bucket of the game for the Iowa Hawkeyes, averaging 90 a game coming in. That's fourth in the nation. You know what's crazy, Rich? No Iowa Hawkeye has ever beaten Iowa State five times. Jordan Bohannon has a chance to do that tonight. And he is public enemy number one. More on that coming up later. Loose ball. Controlled by Brockington. On the post, he gets fouled, and Isaiah Brockington will go to the line and shoot two. Well, here's a look at Fran McCaffrey in his 12th season in Iowa City, 26th overall as a head coach. He's got the third largest, te longest tenure in the Big Ten as a head coach, trailing only Tom Izzo and Matt Painter. There is nobody more fiery on a sideline than Fran McCaffrey. And that's a good thing if you're a Hawkeye fan. Great, great energy. Brockington, a 77% free throw shooter, misses the first one. And what an instant turnaround and instant impact T.J. Altsberger has made in Ames, Iowa. He's got Cardinal Red running through his system. And he's not a newcomer. He spent eight years as an assistant under three different head coaches. He knows and loves this program and this area. The lefty Brockington goes one for two, giving Iowa State a 6-2 lead two minutes in. Here's Murray's not a black. great shooter, Rich. He's more of a get-to-the-mid-range, get-to-the-basket kind of player. You can guard him on the perimeter with smaller players, but not inside. Averaging a tick under 24 a game is Keegan Murray. This time he passes, and the coach's son, Patrick McCaffrey, knocks down the three ball. Also not a great shooter, but capable. He's more of a slash it, take it to the basket, but an intense competitor. I love the way this kid plays. To your point, friend, that was just his sixth triple this season. Does a lot of other things to help you win games. Here's Condit, back door. Hunter comes up empty, follows his own shot, and gets blocked. A precocious freshman, number 11 in Cardinal Red, Tyrese Hunter. There's that ball movement, Rich, trying to go side to side. Cyclone, the Hawkeyes won't let him do it. Three on the shot clock. And Aruna has to squeeze it off, and it's way off the mark to the right. A shot clock violation and some Iowa Hawkeyes defense showing up there. Absolutely. They did a nice job of uh, first guarding Hunter on the drive, and then they were really tight on the perimeter. No room.
Remember, Rich, this is an Iowa team that goes 10 deep, and they have the deepest bench in college basketball, according to Ken Palm. Here's the three by Bohan, and that's his specialty, but he's off the mark there. The Big Ten's all-time leading three-point shooter, Jordan Bohan, and misses from distance. Here's Robert Jones, a transfer from Denver. Two feet in the paint, nowhere shooter. to go, though. Yep. And a three-second violation called. Back Easy back call. He's got to make stands. that move. Yeah, he's got to make that move quickly and go up with it. Once he picks up his dribble, that count starts, and he was caught with the ball in his hands a little too long. Here's McCaffrey working on Jones. Out to Joe Toussaint, number two in black, the point guard for Fran McCaffrey's Hawkeyes. He lost it out of bounds, but it was off Iowa State. And as we go to break, it'll be Iowa State, Iowa basketball. And Jordan Bohannon never thought he'd be back in Ames in his college time playing the Iowa State Cyclones in Ames. So after hitting a couple of key free throws and blowing kisses to the crowd, he signed his sneakers and left them on the Hilton Coliseum floor as a way of saying goodbye to the Cyclones. And now two years later, Fran, <laughs> he's back and playing them again. Listen, he may play well tonight, he may play poorly, but it's not going to be because he doesn't have passion and pride. He's one of those guys that Fran McCaffrey has been watching since fifth and sixth grade. And I'll tell you this, if you're a Hawkeye fan, you love the guy. If you're in every other Big Ten city, you can't stand him. And they, don't, they can't stand him in here tonight, obviously. But uh, that's a sign of respect, Rich, when they boo you like that. Trust me. No doubt. Every time he touches the ball, he's now 10 for 10 from the free they throw don't line boo, this season. Yeah, they don't boo and bums. That's they right. don't boo bums. <laughs> you look at those numbers, 385 career three-pointers. That's the most in Big Ten history. He's also number six all-time scoring for the Iowa yeah. Hawkeyes just recently passing the great B.J. Armstrong. And listen, he's playing off the ball this year. He's been a point guard most of his career. But they love Joe Toussaint on the ball. Yule is coming into the game. So he's adjusted his game as well, Bohannon. Those two free throws give Iowa the lead, 7-6 in the early going. Good D by the Hawkeyes early. Mid-range game from Isaiah Brockington, <laughs> friend. That's his specialty. You got it. He's over 50% in that mid-range. Damn the analytics, guys. That's where he gets his buckets. Here's a three from Bohannon, and he's got it. <laughs> Not going to be intimidated. Like I said, he may have a poor shooting night. He may... He may do what he did to Virginia, go six and nine, but it won't be because he's on. He's afraid. No way. He's one for two from distance so far tonight. Seven points for Bohannon, a 10-8 Iowa lead. Here's the freshman Hunter. Yeah, Can't I don't match. know if I want to shoot that. Working on the bigger Labracha. They've got a mismatch. Let's see if they take advantage. The step back is good. That's a three-pointer, and Iowa State back on top. When Brockington was a sophomore, Penn State played Iowa in the Palestra in Philadelphia, his hometown. He dropped 23 on the Hawkeyes. There's a good contest by the Cyclones defense, one of the stingiest defense in the nation, averaging just a tick over 60 points a game. Great contrast to Styles tonight. Up-tempo offense. You mentioned it, Stingy D. Here's Aliaj Koontz. They call him Jazz in Ames, number five in red. Backdoor cut. The one more. Here's Hunter. And it's too strong. Rich, watch out. Bohannon gets open on the weak side. A little flare screen. Catch in rhythm. Look at that swan neck at the top. And then the kiss. Terrific fundamental shot right there. Kept that swan neck up there, held it up there. And then when it goes in, that hand's right in perfect position to blow the kiss. That's called fundamentals of kissing, Rich. <laughs> Jordan Bohannon coming from a family of Iowa athletes. His brothers all played college ball. His dad played quarterback at Iowa. I think his dad played in the Rose Bowl. Koontz off the mark, the rebound to Keegan Murray. Averages eight rebounds a game. 
Bohannon called for the offensive foul that time, and the crowd loves that. One of the best buildings in all college basketball. When their team is good, there may not be a place like it. They, they have a passion that's unparalleled. It's easy to be a fan of Duke or Kansas when your team wins 80% of the time. These fans have been coming through thick and thin. Another one of those long losing streaks snapped in their last win on the road in Omaha against Creighton. They lost 25 straight road games before that. That's all they've been doing this season is snap losing streaks. But these Iowa State Cyclones are now 8-0. and One of nine undefeated teams, one of seven major conference teams that are at least 8-0 so far this season. This guy's done an amazing job, Rich. I, I saw them practice in October. The energy was great. Stepped out of bounds. Got to get in quickly. But I came to practice, and I wasn't sure how good they would be. And I don't think they have great talent. Trust me. But what I saw was a, a, a connection, an effort, an energy level, a commitment to each other. And we've seen it so far early in the year. Something that Fran McCaffrey's built in, in Iowa City. Aaron Ulis off the mark, his first shot, and Trey Jackson brings it up the left side for the clones. Young man from South Carolina, a junior now, Trey Jackson, one of the holdovers. He's been rock solid as a backup point guard. Brock good defense by on Ulis. Yeah, they played really good D so far. That three ball off the mark, weak side rebound to Patrick McCaffrey. McCaffrey holds the pivot foot and knocks down the mid-range. Yeah, that was close. He did a good job right there. Under control, didn't run anybody over. Still developing Patrick McCaffrey. We know the story. Battling cancer as a seventh grader. A lot of health issues, but he's getting there. Here's Condit working on Robracha. Too strong off the window, and McCaffrey's got another rebound. Remember, LaBracha, the one transfer from North Dakota, who's replacing the best player in the country last year, Luca Garza. And we have a foul on the floor, 11.55 to go, a one-point game. Iowa on the road, trying to pull off a top 25 upset against their in-state rival about this game directly related to this game. We'll share those a little bit later on. Rich Hollenberg, along with Fran Fraschilla, a sellout crowd in Ames, Iowa, inside Hilton Coliseum, looking to see a little bit of a rejuvenated Hilton magic as the Cyclones ranked 17th and undefeated, trying to take down the Iowa Hawkeyes. And honestly, Fran, if Iowa State could win this game, they have a chance to move up the rankings tonight. Garden State Hoops made a statement. <laughs> Rutgers yeah. beat number one Purdue, and 23-ranked Seton Hall beat seventh-ranked Texas. Ron Harper Jr. threw in a half-court shot, and uh, Purdue, a team I've seen three times, and I thought might be the best team in the country. They went down tonight. But I'll tell you, we're watching the kid at the foul line. Tony Perkins, a sophomore from Indianapolis, who has been absolutely terrific off the bench for Fran McCaffrey. Love his game. He's a tough, hard-nosed power guard. All right, first time tonight we see those changing defenses of the Hawkeyes. They'll play a variety of zones, presses, and so far, Rich, their defense has been stellar. An underrated aspect of this Iowa team. Ten on the shot clock for Iowa State. I, I think if the Cyclones... Black, it's a and I think if the Cyclones are to win tonight, they need a big game from Kalsher or Brockington, like we saw in Brooklyn, Rich. Yeah, each of those players had 30 points in that NIT tip-off in Brooklyn. Condit tracks it down. And Tyrese Hunter traveled with the basketball. A little bit of an uneven start for the freshman guard. Yeah, and I wanted to mention something. You mentioned what an upset this might be. Obviously, 17th ranked, I, and Iowa not ranked, Rich. But remember, the guys in Vegas have Iowa the favorite tonight. 
and by you know five points. The other issue is remember who Iowa has lost to Purdue and Illinois so far. Two teams that, quite frankly, are top six teams in the country. Well, I think that's got to be something there. Too much contact. That's Connor McCaffrey on the floor now. Got the rebound and a extra possession for Iowa, but they still come up empty. You don't say that too many times about these Hawkeyes. Trey Jackson at the other end. Not a surprise. He's been knocking down 40% from behind the arc this year. A really competent backup guard for TJ Otzelberger. Jackson's 12th triple of the year. Brings Iowa State to within one. Keegan Murray still scoreless in this game. Ball goes out of bounds. Good ball movement right here. Take a look now. They leave Jackson open in transition. And Trey Jackson, the junior, one of the few leftovers from the Steve Prohm era, has fit right in with this toughness. Nice. Oh, they good set, good setup for the lob. And Murray, tough angle. They passed up an open look for three, but the drive goes for Kalsher. Kalsher or Brockington must have a big night. Kalsher has four, Brockington has six, and the Iowa State lead is one with just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. And a low scoring first half so far, Fran, that's advantage Iowa State. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, the Hawkeyes love to, uh, love to get out and run. They average 90. But this is one of those games when you go on the road, Rich, a team like Iowa State's going to make you play in this slow down game like Michigan State would. And Iowa's capable of winning a game like this. There's a nice take off the inbounds by Tony Perkins. or He has five already, and he is instant offense off the bench. Yeah, 15 a game in, in the first two Big Ten games, average. And that Iowa pressure gets to the Cyclones again. What they are, they're the baseball pitcher. They're like Greg Maddox. They don't just throw the fastball at you, the man to man. They can come at you with the, the slider, the changeup, the slurve, the spitter, maybe. <laughs> but they, they play zone, they press, they play man to man. A lot of pitches in the arsenal. Did I just say spitter? <laughs> I'll, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> A lot of reserves on the floor for Fran McCaffrey. Let's see if that bench could produce like they have been all year. In transition, that one blocked out of bounds by Keegan Murray's brother, Chris, who is also a talented, talented player out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah, little different kind of player, a little bit more multi-purpose, maybe a little better defender. Both of these guys were late bloomers. Of course, their dad, Kenyon, was an outstanding player for the Hawkeyes back in the mid-1990s. Tyrese Hunter, aggressive as we've seen him all season, and he draws the foul, will go to the line. Uh, we love watching this young man in Brooklyn, Tyrese Hunter, who committed to Steve Prohm from Racine, St. Catharines High School. Mom and dad passed away at an early age. He's had great mentors in his life, as you will take a look at Chris Murray right there. But this kid... You know, is he Ty Halliburton? Is he Monte Morris? I don't know. Not just yet, but he's off to a great start to his career. Averaging over he's 11 a winner. points and five assists a game, friend. Toughness. He fits right in with T.J. Otzelberger. His building here in Ames. And you talk about high praise from T.J. Otzelberger. He said... The one thing that he tells his team when they ask him, what do you want from us, coach? He said, play as hard as Tyrese Hunter plays. Yep. He's an everyday guy. Shooter. Here's Sanford off the mark. Tracked down by Perkins. Iowa down one. And they can't reclaim the lead. Weak side rebound, Gabe love. Kalsher. Yeah, what I love about this game so far, every possession on both ends has been hotly contested. Loose ball, picked up by Iowa oh! State. Oh, and no! Brockington the finish. Wow!
Great help defense. Eight twenty-eight to go. It's anarchy in Ames, friend. Take a look. Loose ball. Watch Brockington sending it in. And this crowd absolutely has something to cheer about this season. Only two hours by car separating Iowa City from Ames. 138 miles to be exact. And there is no love lost between the Hawkeyes and the Cyclones. It's fun. And there's fans back in the stands. You love it. Boots the rebound. There's that side-to-side -side ball movement we talked about. And Hunter pays it off. Need a timeout. And Fran McCaffrey calls one. First timeout used by the Hawks in college basketball, but it wasn't like they were going to go undefeated. Right, right. And the great thing about college basketball, Rich, is it changes week to week. There are so many teams with veteran players this year. In college basketball, because of the super seniors, we've got a lot of great teams. That Rutgers team has everybody back. They were not playing well early, and this could be the jump starter for Steve Michael's club. Yeah, Geo Baker out, and they still beat the number one Purdue Boilermakers. And that this means is great eight help right there. the teams left. Yeah, great help on that last post up. Keegan Murray, you mentioned, I don't think he's got a basket yet. Nope, the Keegan Murray and Chris Murray combination held scoreless so far. Hunter, good jump stop, finds Anaruna, and he gets it to go. First bucket for Tristan Anaruna, the transfer from Kansas. Yeah, and a terrific jump stop, playing off two feet by the freshman Hunter. Really well done. Look at that defense for their last nine field goals, Fran. What you want to do if you're Iowa, Iowa State now is you want to play aggressively, but you do not want to put the Hawkeyes on the foul line. Number one, they're a great free throw shooting team, but fouling negates hustle. So you don't want to play so hard that you commit a foul like that 30 feet away from the basket. Rich, it's going to be a long night. We're not going anywhere for a while. A lot of, a lot of great plays to be made. That's that foul we're talking about. You can't do that if you're the Cyclones. That's just going to give Iowa eventually a chance to shoot at the foul line where they're deadly. And that is exactly what's happening now. They are in the bonus with 7.05 to go. Every subsequent Iowa State foul will send the Hawkeyes to the line. And they've made more free throws, Fran, than their opponents have attempted this season. Well, 78% from the line. This guy's at 81% and climbing. And again, when your half-court defense is so good, you got to make your opponent beat you, you know, with field goals and not free throws. As a team, the Iowa Hawkeyes just under 79% from the free throw line. That's 22nd in the country. They hit two there to pull within five with 7.05 to go. You're going to see a little three, three quarter court pressure now. One, two, one, one. And it can be a nuisance and it could be a problem at times. Rockington, nice. aggressive. He is so good on the move to the left hand. It's hard to keep him to his right in transition, but the running start to his left is deadly. Back up to a seven-point cushion for the Cyclops. Doing a good job of fronting the post. Great help on the baseline on the drives. Bohannon. Nothing doing from the corner. Here's Kelsher. Another air ball. Isaiah Brockington is a dominant left-handed driver. So you've got to try to keep him on the right hand, but in transition, it's hard to do because you're just backpedaling into the lane. Now Robert Jones, an energy giver off the bench for TJ Otzelberger, steps to the line. 
to shoot two. And he bricks the first. We'll have a Saturday afternoon college basketball doubleheader for you with number eight, Kansas, hosting Missouri at Allen Fieldhouse at 315 Eastern, 215 Central. That's the border war. Then old school rivals squaring off in South Bend, number 10, Kentucky, taking on Notre Dame. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. And just to put in perspective, the rivalries, Missouri and Kansas renewing that rivalry. They're two and a half hours apart. Columbia, Missouri and Lawrence, Kansas. We're talking about just two hours separating Ames, Iowa and Iowa City, Iowa. No, it's not quite Xavier, Cincinnati, which is about 3.8 miles <laughs> in the middle of Cincinnati. That'll be coming up soon at uh, Crosstown Shootout. But yes, great. These are great basketball rivalries. Good hands by the Cyclones defense picking that one off. You don't see a lot of turnovers from the Hawkeyes. Now, good point, friend. That's only the second one tonight. You see how they'll keep that ball moving side to side until someone can get into the paint off the dribble. Jackson walled up by Rebracha. It's going to stay Iowa State basketball. Tough stretch for the Hawkeyes. They beat Virginia. Losses to Purdue and Illinois, and this will be the fourth game of that stretch. Here's Kalsher off the inbounds. Loose ball out of bounds. It looks like it's going to stay with the Cyclones. Good effort by Anaruna on the glass. First time, I think we're going to see the big fella. Dundelay, the sophomore. And right now, everything going the way of the Cyclones. They are taking the fight to the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Tristan and Aruna is going to go to the line. Well, they're not a great offensive team, Rich. You know, they, they do at times struggle to score, despite the fact that they're 8-0. But what they've done tonight is they've eliminated... Fast break baskets and Keegan Murray from getting going the first 15 minutes. And they have dominated on the glass. Ten offensive rebounds already for the Iowa State Cyclones. Iowa only has eight total rebounds tonight. First time we've seen a little pressure by the Cyclones now. Little man pressure, maybe some run and jump. Nope, straight up man. Chess match between Fran McCaffrey and T.J. Otzelberger, a sellout crowd in Ames, Iowa, Hilton Coliseum. The Cyhawk series at fever pitch. You didn't notice it, but they fronted Murray. There was no chance on that set play. Great feed. Jones inside finishes it off. All defense, all energy right now in this building. Just listen. Here's Perkins for three, and he can't silence the crowd. Great and hands, he knew it by Perkins. Yep, he knew Brockington was going left. He sat right on that left hand, a terrific play by the sophomore. Picked his pocket. Bohannon shadowed by the Cyclones defense. McCaffrey the floater. Rolls off another rebound for Anaruna. I think you could safely say so far, Rich, one shot, and that's it. And that's been an understatement. They've missed their last nine field goal attempts, has the Iowa Hawkeyes. And this is a team that's the fourth best scoring team in the nation. Brockington. He's in double digits. He has a dozen. King of the mid range. The mid range is not dead. Here's the nation's leading scorer, Keegan Murray, skunked so far in the first half. Bohannon off the bounce. Boy. You know he'd love to get going, but I'll tell you, even that shot was earned. He said towards 400 threes, but that was earned. Bounce pass, Jones out of bounds. 
And we take our final media timeout of an exciting and entertaining first half in the Psych Hawk series of 31 20. Thank you, Monica. We'll see you at halftime. And a big reason why Iowa State has a nine point lead for Ann Fraschilla is the nation's leading scorer, Keegan Murray, has been held scoreless tonight. How has Iowa State done it? Well, he's a post up player first, and what they're doing is they're beating him to his spots. We call that doing your work early in the post. And they have been right on the money, right in his spots where he likes to catch the ball. Little zone now by the Cyclones. Kalsher, corner three, off the mark. The rebound to the seen a player on the floor, yeah. Joe Tucson. I've seen a couple times this year where a team has changed into a zone and it's thrown off the opponent's rhythm. Let's see if that can happen in the final two and a half minutes. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Chris Murray. Right spot, right time. We saw Jazz Coombs. Help this team win the preseason NIT. He's an energizer. He's an irritant is what he is. That's the third Iowa turnover of the first half. They only average 7.9 turnovers a game. Chris was not happy with that call and he showed it and he can't let his emotions get to him. Here's that three-quarter court pressure again. Good hand by Murray. Deep three by Bohannon. That was Steph Curry range for Jordan Bohannon. Look at the fronting in the post. Rebracha off the window. Oh man, that was just a breakdown. That was 25 seconds of great defense. Somebody left Rebracha and he got an easy one. Two minutes left, seven point lead for Iowa State. Undefeated, they ranked 17th in the country. And they're staying in the zone, Rich. Kalsher can't find the range from three-point land tonight. Fran McCaffrey's offense stifled by the T.J. Otzelberger ferocious Iowa State defense. And this young man at the foul line, Jazz Coons, he started a number of games at Washington State for Kyle Smith, and he has been a terrific addition. You know, the way the transfer portal is working in college this year, this guy would be the equivalent of picking up a good, solid NBA free agent to come off the bench. Energy guy, defender, and an, an irritant on the defensive end, but also can make some shots. And you know he's from Slovenia, Rich. So you know those kids in the former Yugoslavia can make their free throws. Same hometown as Luka Doncic. And Kutz goes two for two from the free throw line, extending the Iowa State lead to nine, 33-24, above 42 to go in the first half. Hawkeyes need a couple of buckets. There's that help again. They're fronting the post to no avail. Wide open, Kalsher still can't get it to go from beyond the arc. Guess who? Koontz. They're in that zone, 1-1-3. One, one, Five on the shot clock. Brockington calls his own number and knocks it down. A game high 15 for Isaiah Brockington. Iowa State defense knocks it out of bounds. Remember, Rich, when he was a sophomore against this team, he dropped 23 in a game and a win in his hometown. Take a look. Time running down. Not really his strength. He's more of a mid-range guy, but certainly capable. Look at this defense. No airspace for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Here's Robracha. Got the foul called, and Philip Robracha will go to the line with 41.8 to go. We used, we used to joke with Fred Hoiberg 
that when we would come to an Iowa State practice, some days we'd see about 10 minutes of defense, Rich, because he was such a great offensive mind. T.J. Otzelberger, I know he was pulling his hair out saying, Coach, come on, man, a few more shell drills, a few more one-on-one -on -one turn full court. This is a different Iowa State style, but this fan base loves it. A use it or lose it timeout for T.J. Otzelberger, 25. The Cyclones lead the Iowa Hawkeyes in the 75th edition of the Cyhawk series alongside Fran Priscilla, I'm Rich Hollenberg, an electric atmosphere inside Hilton Coliseum, sellout crowd watching their Cyclones take on their in-state rivals as Rebracha knocks down the free throws. Rich, if the Hawkeyes can get a stop and a score and go into halftime with just a little bit of last minute momentum, it's gonna help them. There's that pressure again. Got some length at the top. And then now back to the zone, usually. There it is. Got an 11 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Here's Brockington. Aggressive. Left hand. Got it again. You got it. He's a one arm bandit, but he's robbing the Hawkeyes. Under 10 to go. Hawkeyes. Would love a bucket going into the locker room. They're on the ropes. Here's the nation's leading scorer. Can't find the bottom. And Keegan Murray is scoreless. And his Iowa Hawkeyes are down a dozen in Ames to the 17th ranked Iowa State Cyclones. And he's usually scoring. Perfect from the field was Brockington, seven for seven, and the defense really came to play. This is an Iowa team that scores 90 points a game, and they have the leading scorer in the nation in Keegan Murray. They scored 26 in the half, and Keegan Murray held to zero points, Fran. How have they done at the site once? They've not let him catch the ball in the low post, Rich. They've smothered him on the perimeter, but they're beating him to a spot in the low post, and there's an offensive foul by Rebracha. Turnover number five on Fran McCaffrey's club, who averages just 7.9 turnovers a game. That's the second fewest turnovers per game in the entire country. Rich, you know how I feel about the first. Out of their game. Yeah, you know how I feel about the first three minutes of the second half. If you're the Cyclones, you've played so well for 20 minutes, you don't want the Hawkeyes to cut into this lead quickly. So your intensity level has got to be sky high. Cyclones looking to improve to 9-0. It would be top of their third best start in Graham history. Here's Hunter. Step back three. Short. Ill-advised. All the way to the hole. Toussaint can't finish. Oh, man. He had a point-blank look at it. He loved to have that one back. Going left. Hunter at the other end. Here's Kalsher, 0 for 4, now 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. You know that he's streaky. And, and DJ Otzelberger told us this morning, we don't care about the shots going down. The defense will take care of his offense. But we also I saw him get 30 tonight. in New York. Here's McCaffrey. And he comes up empty. We've seen a propensity for air balls tonight. Well, they, they just don't look comfortable, Rich. They are the Hawkeyes at least right now are not in sync And right now neither offense Clicking just yet almost two minutes into the second half. Nobody's put points on the board I used to hate as a coach to have my team play their heart out and be up 10 or 12 and then not be ready to start the second half So far. I like the intensity level of both teams Rockington inbounds to Condit Bounce pass. Again, Brockington with the two-hand flush. Well, they gambled on the lob to Condit, and when he caught it, they left Brockington open on the baseline. It was a hustle play gone awry. See the smothering inside? McCaffrey, no. Rebracha, the rebound. Jump hook, doesn't go. Rebound to Brockington. Great job by Condit, walling off Rebracha. And Isaiah Brockington goes the length of the floor and draws the foul. 
on this inbounds play. Watch, watch how he's getting. He has to get rid of it, and everybody goes to Condit, and the guy that took the ball out of bounds is the guy open on the baseline. Isaiah Brockington shooting two already with a game high 19 points. And now he's got 20. Fran, he's one of only three players in the Big 12, averaging at least 16 points and seven rebounds so far this season. Well, he transferred to uh, Iowa State, and T.J. Otzelberger basically gave him the keys to the car. What he told us today about Brockington is he's an everyday guy. We never have to worry in practice about his level of intensity, and it rubs off on the younger guys. Largest lead of the game for the Cyclones. And another unforced error, although any error that Iowa's made has been in large part due to the excellent Iowa State defense. Yeah, I, I think that's a great way to put it, Rich. I would say forced, you know, uh, because this pressure is relentless. We thought early in the year that it might not be able to sustain itself versus some of the lower level teams they've played, but in Brooklyn, they proved it to us. Creighton on Saturday night and tonight, they've been absolutely unbelievable. A pair of top 25 wins in Brooklyn, taking down Xavier and then Memphis. They're one of only five programs the Cyclones are with more than one win against top 25 teams. Well, TJ got emotional today when he talked about being the coach of his team. His wife was an All-American here and an NBA star. He was an assistant here. He loves this place. And the energy level he's bringing is amazing. Tristan and Aruna gets in the act with a three. No space. A foul called with six on the shot clock. Somewhere, I know the Sixers play tonight. Somewhere, Monte Morris is smiling. George Niang is smiling. Naz Mitru Long over in Europe is smiling because they have so much pride in this program. I didn't think that was a foul, honestly. And that's three fouls on the big man, George Condon. Bohannon inbounds. Here's Perkins. Rebracha shows three and then flushes it. Nice, nice job by Rebracha. An easy basket, something that has not been easy to come by. Yeah, maybe that can spark this Hawkeyes offense. And a timeout called by Iowa State getting trapped at the center court line. He was very public in coming out with his own cancer story. He was diagnosed with cancer, announced it earlier this season, and his putt battle is very public because years ago, he went through open heart surgery and he said he felt like he helped people who were dealing with similar circumstances when he got that injury or that medical, uh, that classification and decided that by talking about it, it could help other people and he's doing the same thing now. Absolutely, and we know his son Jamie, who's a healthy student manager up at Northern Iowa, he battled cancer as a baby, germ, uh, a germ tumor that doesn't happen very often. The family's been through multiple uh, uh, experiences with this, but it's been just a tremendous uh, for for Jamie to be able to tell his story. Great stuff. It's V Week at ESPN. Our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support the visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. A giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. 
you'll even discover the center of the universe. Brockington one night, Kalsher the next, Rich. And think about Saturday night. Their top three scorers, including those two I mentioned, went six of 27 at Creighton, still came away with the win. It's not a potent offensive team. It's a defensive-oriented team. When Brockington's on, it makes a big difference. Great help on that post up again. Murray's been in witness protection tonight. All alone. McCaffrey from the wing. No good. Keegan Murray the rebound. Still has Look not scored. Wow. He, well, he's shooting over eight arms. And primarily they're fronting him, and Iowa has not done a good job of getting him the ball. Playing up Maybe the line. this is it. Here's Murray. And he tried to throw it down and missed it. They call a jump ball. It's going to be possession arrow, Iowa State. Uh, I love that. I love that no timeout by Brockington. I don't know if he knew that the possession arrow was theirs, but smart players recognize it. And rather than waste a timeout, take a look right here. He wants to get going, Murray. Throw it down, but not against that lane. I love the idea that Brockington did not call timeout because I'm guessing he knew he had, that he had the possession arrow. And on the other end, it has been that kind of night for Keegan Murray and the Hawkeyes. Deflected out of bounds. It's going to stay Iowa State basketball. This defense is for real. I don't know how many Big 12 games this team will win, but they will be murder in this building at the very least. Iowa State's defense ranked 17th in the nation in three-point percentage defense. They're also sixth in the nation in turnover percentage, friend. They turn their opponents over more than a quarter of the time. And they don't press full court, Rich. It's all 22 feet and in. Rockington triggers the inbounds. Five minutes zone, gone by matchup in the zone now. Half. Yep. Going to the matchup. Caleb Grill, he was four for four from three against Creighton. Misses his first attempt from deep, but they get it back. Great tip out. It started with Anaruna and then Coons. Look at the fronting in the post. No airspace for Murray. Bounce pass. Robracha, no. And the foul is called. Good pass by Perkins. Let's go back and watch the effort. We talked about getting off to a quick start in the second half. Falls down. That's money in the mid-range. Rich, he's shooting over 50% on his mid-range twos. Isaiah Brockington's father, Antoine, was the MEAC player of the year back in 1998 playing for Coppin State. And Isaiah credits his dad, Antoine, for coaching him up on that mid-range game. You know, I, Michael Jordan was a master at that for a long time. Isaiah Brockington's dad, Antoine, played in that era and said, son, that will never go out of style. And he's proven it tonight. Yeah, but Antoine's 0-1 in Hilton Coliseum because Coppin <laughs> State came out there his senior year, and he dropped 20 on the Cyclones, came away with the out. His son's undefeated in Hilton right now. They easily handle the Hawkeye pressure. Here's Coots for three. Look at this. Look at the D. No foul. Tipped away by Koontz. And stolen by Hunter. An easy two at the other end.
They're going bonkers in Hilton Coliseum. Their Iowa State Cyclones are 13 minutes and change away from taking Hawkeyes just one for ten in this half. You didn't think it could I'll get much you, worse it, for one of the best scoring yeah. teams in the country. Yeah, it's very easy to let up, Rich, when you have a big lead at the half. That's what impresses me. They grabbed Iowa by the throat, and they will not let up. Keegan Murray, 15 in black, the nation's leading scorer at 23.9 a game, has been scoreless in this contest. Five to shoot for the clones. Jackson does. And the rebound to Iowa. Double team. No call. Great defense. Here's the lob, Murray. And he's finally got is. his first bucket of the game. Well, he's off to Schneid. 28 minutes. Got another whistle. It's a foul on the floor on the Hawkeyes. Remember, Keegan Murray did not play against Purdue because of an ankle injury. He was pretty good against Illinois in the loss at home. Tonight, he's got to feel like he's wearing a, a straight jacket. Zone. Keep mixing their defense is looking for something to work. Corner three, Jackson got it. He is as improved as anybody on this team. He's like that classic NBA backup point guard. Like Monty Morris. The lead is ballooned to 24, counting down to 12 minutes to go. And a foul is going to be called on Iowa State. Well, we've got a great lineup for you on Saturday. UCLA taking on number three, UConn, in women's basketball in the Never Forget Tribute Classic. That's at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific on ABC. Then the 26th MLS Cup featuring the Timbers of Portland taking on NYCFC. And at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, the 87th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony. Capped off by a 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, UFC 269 on ESPN Plus pay-per-view with not one, but two title fights. That's the lineup with a little bit for everyone. And those UConn women, Fran, lost to Georgia Tech tonight. I saw that. And Corey Close, UCLA Bruins head coach, is going to bring her lady Bruins east. Should be fun. She's got a good program. Little pressure. Cyclones handle it. You don't want to put it on ice, but you do want to move the ball judiciously. Keep that defense in motion. Seven to shoot. Coucher, bounce pass, picked off by Ulis. Here's Bo Haddon. Around it out. Murray the rebound and the putback. Excellent job. Keegan got on the back side of that jump shot and got himself an easy one. Kalsher in transition. If they attack you, you got to come right back at them and attack that Iowa press. Cannot play with a big lead. Scared. Perkins no, and we're going the other way. Just an amazing uh, turnaround, if you will, from a guy who has uh, been part of this program for a long time before returning from UNLV in the spring.
T.J. Altsberger, just the second Iowa State head coach to start his career in Ames as a head coach with an eight no mark. Steve Prohm did it as well back in 2015-16, and now T.J. Altsberger is 11 minutes away from starting his career as a head coach in Ames with a nine and no mark. His wife Allison was a pretty good player, first round pick in the WNBA. They met here when he was a young coach, and she had just graduated, first rounder. She knows a lot about Cyclone basketball history. Watch them swarm on those baseline drives. See the double teams come and disappear. That three off the mark, the rebound to Tyrese Hunter. Tyrese Hunter, nine points, four assists tonight. First Cy Hawk game, he's been rock solid. And that a rare mistake by the Iowa State Cyclones. And ironically enough, the, the mistake by both point guards. Jackson thought that Hunter was going to pop out. Hunter went back door. Good screen. Good and left alone. Out of bounds. Ball goes to the Cyclones. And Keegan Murray set a great baseline screen. The defender went under. Bohannon read it perfectly to the corner, just couldn't knock it down. So far, one of those nights. Iowa Hawkeyes shooting just 24% from the field. They're close to 50% shooting on the season. And Aruna, no, Koontz can't follow. And Aruna should have passed that ball. And a foul going to be called on Isaiah Brockington. You know, you know that Iowa's not going to quit, Rich. And you know they've got firepower. But I don't see to this point that they can make an 8 or 10-0 run because of the defense tonight. Definitely capable. Nice, but a bad pass. Tried to run a sneaky set. That was the other thing we've seen in Brooklyn. The scouting report defense in the walkthroughs is Belichickian. These kids know the opponent as good as anybody. There's another steal. Here's Chris Murray at the other end. Okay. His first two of the night. Yep, set your press up now and get a couple of stops. And Tristan and Aruna and Gabe Calder and company want to talk it over. Only one time out remaining for the Iowa State Cyclones. They're up 20. But I was not going away, friends. It's at 1 Eastern. Then it's number one South Carolina hosting number eight Maryland. Both games on ESPN in the app. One app, one tap. And to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, go to V.org. And don't forget, Dickie V is going to do that uh, Calipari Chris Mack matchup right before Christmas. Dick's going to be down in Waco this weekend. He's back. Great to see him and a great week for the V Foundation. Going left. And a whistle stop play with 9.25 to go. Well, you got to go back a couple years, Fran, for the last Iowa Hawkeyes three game losing streak. They lost to Purdue. They lost to Illinois, and now they're on the verge of losing to Iowa State. March of 2019, the end of the regular season back in 2019, the last time Fran McCaffrey and company lost three in a row. Well, remember, they play a schedule heavy with ranked teams, so, you know, to lose to the, to the two they've lost to already, nothing to be ashamed of. Rockington comes up empty on that attempt. That is first miss, Rich. I believe you might have been. Friend. Nine for ten from the field now for Isaiah Brockington. Murray off the mark. And this Murray is two for 13 from the field. And I talked to, when we talked to Fran McCaffrey today, you know, we asked him about the tough stretch, and he said, I've got older guys that understand the, the process and know that uh, when you play the schedule, we do. We will take some lumps. 
Nice pass, pass from Murray to Murray. And here you go. Remember, Iowa has depth, Rich. They can run 10 guys in and out, but you don't want to foul. Only the fifth, sixth, excuse me. They'll take it out of bounds, I believe. Murray to Murray to drive, to help up. You don't want to help up. And Keegan with another easy one. Well, Fran, it was just the other night we saw, what, Wisconsin was down 22 to Indiana, came back and won a game. That was at home. So, you know, a little different, obviously. But, yes, we've seen strange stuff. I remember a few years ago, Buddy Heald's Oklahoma team ranked in the top five of 22 with 17 to go. And Monte Morris and George Niang, and Niang took over a little different. A little pressure now. A little shaky. Here you go. A Here we go. go. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered. Now the lead is cut to 15. Nice feed and Koontz at the other end. Cyclones needed that. When you're uh, Hawkeyes, you got to throw caution to the wind. Bohannon, quick trigger off the mark. Pulls up from the free throw line, can't knock it down. Iowa trying to make it interesting, Rich. There's the steal in the press. The kick out, Bohannon heading towards 400 in career threes. But Cyclones came right back, attacked that press, got a basket up the court. Jordan Bohannon has now 388 career three-pointers, to be specific. But it's been too far and too few between tonight in Hilton Coliseum. And now we see Kate well, put it in for another good shooter. Yeah, to put it in perspective, Rich, eight minutes to go. Iowa has 42 points and shooting 28% from the field. Oops. This is the front end. Eight minutes to go, 17-point lead for the 17th ranked Iowa State Cyclones. See how the switching keeps the ball in front of them. Good switches. Good cut. Back door. Here's Brockington. Taking on Murray. All alone. Jackson. No. Now the lob. And it goes over Keegan Murray and out of bounds. Frustration personified for the Hawkeyes. Down 17 in eight. You know what they do? But the Cyclones defense tonight, Rich, has been just as good as it's been all season long. They're 9-0, or they're 8-0, excuse me, they're 8-0 for a reason. Right now, they're seven and a half minutes away from being 9-0, and they sure look like it. Only eight teams remaining undefeated in Division I basketball, and Iowa State making a bid to remain one of those eight. This pressure's been a little bit of a problem. Yeah, that pressure's been a little bit of a problem for Iowa State. If you're Fran McCaffrey, Fran, and you're down 17 with 7.20 left, what do you tell your team to keep them focused and in it? Rich, if I knew, I'd still be coaching. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, uh, you just got to keep competing. And remember, they go 10 deep, so they just need one of those, like we talked about, one of those runs. They almost had it with the steal and the three by Bohannon. Brockington, three. Given but 26 tonight. Amazing, amazing. Great great dish, too, on the drive. I think that was Jackson. Hunter, excuse me. Perkins mid-range. It's a little pre precarious, but they get it over mid-court. DJ Altsberger content to run as much time off the clock as possible now. And they turn it over. Here's Murray to do that. 
Got to shoot it quick now. They're missing from near and from far tonight. Watch Tyrese Hunter, the outstanding freshman. Baseline drive, baseline drift to the corner. Get your feet set and knock it down. It's been that kind of night for the young man from Archbishop Bryan High School in Philadelphia. In the suburbs. He has three what a position for him, part of his 26 points. Only had eight threes in the previous eight games. Well, as we talked about it, Rich, his strength has been to the basket and in the 15-foot range, but uh, he's given you the whole package tonight. And man, you hit the nail on the head because you said either or, Kelsher or Brockington needs to step up in a game like this. Gabe Kelsher's really struggled tonight. He now has only seven points on the night, but Brockington has taken this team and put him on his back. Yeah, and Kate Gabe's a streak shooter. He has always been that way, going back to his Minnesota days. But remember what TJ told us today. We don't care as much about him going on a streak. It's the defense that gets his offense going. His defense has been pretty good tonight. And now Jazz Koontz checks out, and George Condit with four fouls checks back into the game. George was not happy when he came out, but I think that was a prudent move by his head coach. Condit, the only remaining player on this team that won a Big 12 tournament title. He did it as a freshman. Perkins. And a foul on the floor. How about Caleb Grill's story? That's a guy that's been around the block a few times from Mays, Kansas, Rich. Started his career at Iowa State, transferred to UNLV, and then transferred back to Iowa State when T.J. Otzelberger came aboard. And Bohannon gets the foul and will go to the line. Well, we have a Saturday afternoon college basketball doubleheader coming up for you on Saturday. Number eight, Kansas, hosting Missouri in the border war at Allen Fieldhouse. That's at 315 Eastern, 215 Central. And then some old school rivals squaring off in South Bend. Number 10, Kentucky taking on Notre Dame. Both games on ESPN and the app. One app, one tap. And our friend LaFonzo Ellis gets... Welcomed into the Notre Dame Ring of Honor at halftime of that Kentucky game. The nicest man in college basketball, LaFonzo Ellis. There used to be a tie for first between him and Hubert Davis. But when Hubert <laughs> became a coach, we started to see the scowl. So, sorry, Hubert. But I love your competitiveness. Good job by Hunter. Pull it out. Run a little block. Get your team into your offense. This kid is a absolute winner. Fearless. Five on the shot clock. Look at that oh. feed. Pick and roll. Off the left hand. That kid must have been a high school quarterback. They just lulled the Hawkeyes defense to sleep. Perfect possession there. They used that clock wisely. Murray for three. There you go. That allows them to set up their press. Keegan's got nine. All nine coming in the second half. Might be too little, too late for the Hawkeyes. Look at this lock. Monty Morris loved that pass. I can tell you that right now. The 14,000 this game is over. Home Coliseum loved that pass, friend. This game is over. Great pass off the one hand. And then transition versus the press. Just throw it up there, young guy. Yeah. Wear that number 11 well. I'm shocked. 
I thought the clones could win a game like this. I didn't see this coming. And Fran, as much as we've talked about Isaiah Brockington, and rightfully so, Tyrese Hunter is quietly put together a stat sheet stuffer kind of night. Nine points, seven rebounds, and six assists for the freshman point guard. Remember, he, co he committed to Steve Prome. T.J. Otzelberger, a Milwaukee guy, he knows Wisconsin as well as anybody. He convinced Tyrese Hunter, you're my kind of guy. You're going to fit right in with us. You're tough. You're from Racine. You were coached by a Bennett, so you love defense. And it's been, so far, the absolute perfect fit. And, I, Rich, I said this in New York because I've had this experience as a coach. And so has Fran McCaffrey and many others. Right now, TJ has an out-of-body experience. He prepared his team to play a great Iowa team. And right now, he's beaming with pride because he knows this, he knows this game is over. Here's Brockington, another exclamation point. Oh, they're going to go crazy in Wallabies tonight. Wish I was there. And it's going to be a jump ball, possession arrow, Cyclones. And it's been Cyclones all night long. He has done just a, an amazing transformation. Uh, this was an offensive-minded program when they won. TJ was a part of it. He's brought the grit and toughness to Hilton Coliseum. What an atmosphere tonight. And as gritty as he appears to be you touched on this earlier friend when we talked about to him after practice this morning he got emotional when we asked him what playing and coaching in this game means and he really let us inside his emotions and how important not only this game but just being part of this program and part of this environment how much it means yeah, no, to tj also no question he was hired by greg mcdermott he was a junior college coach. He was a high school coach. He was an AAU coach. He was kind of a nobody. Didn't play for Coach K. Didn't play for Roy Williams. And there are guys like that out there. They just want to put their imprint on a college program. He wanted to be a college coach from the time he was 14. He's had great mentors as well. Here's well, Hunter kid. in double digits now. This kid's fearless. Fearless. Murray for three. That's really not his specialty, but they are just settling for shots at this point. Yeah, this one's over, Rich. It, you know, seriously, they've ordered the Subway sandwiches for the trip back, back to Iowa City. But now if you're Fran McCaffrey, it, you know, you lose to, you've lost to three good teams, but you've got to get something figured out because they have stopped Keegan Murray tonight. They swarmed him. They fronted him. They didn't let it. They didn't let him get easy catches. Now 11 points, eight rebounds, and six assists for the man with the basketball. 11 in red, Tyrese Hunter. I'm not going into any street fights, but if I were, I'd take that kid with me. Coots. And Brockington takes it away. Up ahead. And look at the recovery on defense. No quit yes. in this Iowa State team even, though they're exactly. up 21. Absolutely. Tyrese Hunter said, you ain't getting an easy one. I'm going to get back in transition. You know, we didn't ask Fran about... Keegan Murray's ankle. And I'm not sure he's not 100% rich, but stepped out of bounds. But uh, this team's lost its mojo. Tough schedule, no question. Yeah. Got to bounce back. Got Utah State coming up on the 18th to the Hawkeyes. And a couple more non-conference games before January rolls around. And they'll take on Maryland in Carver Hawkeye Arena on January 3rd. Yeah, and that, that, uh, that uh, Utah State game will be up at, up at the Pentagon at Sioux Falls, South Dakota. My friend Paul Seville and the crew up there will anxiously await that one. Great, great basketball arena, the Pentagon.
And Utah State's nothing to sneeze at. No, Ryan, Ryan Odom's done a good job of replacing Craig Smith. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a shot clock violation with 1.55 to go. He, know, he knows it's over. He just wants his team to finish cleanly. And get in that locker room and celebrate. There's that help again. That's how many times tonight have they tried to get the ball inside and either couldn't pass it in or the ball was deflected away. And you know, Rich, Brockington's guarded Murray most of the night, and he still has 28 and 9. My question to you then, Fran, is once Big 12 play starts, and I'm looking at the state's Big 12 calendar, they start off with Baylor and then Texas Tech. And it's a slog. It is an absolute gauntlet in the Big 12, yeah. as you know better than anybody. Can this style of defense plus maybe one star on offense a night, could that sustain itself through a Big 12 regular season? Well, it can sustain itself because the effort's going to be there. But, you know, both the Big 10 and the Big 12 are leagues that you run a gauntlet from January to March. So they're not going undefeated. But they're certainly way better than they were 12 months ago. Keep in mind, folks, this Iowa State team in the preseason was predicted to finish last in the Big 12. They don't look like a last place team now. Kick it out, run some clock, use 10, 20 more seconds. Make sure nobody gets hurt. Hope both teams can finish up without an injury. But what a night. Hilton Magic is back. Right now, the Cyclones up 21 with 45 ticks left. Their largest margin of victory in the Cyhawk series against the Hawkeyes was 17. And that feat was accomplished all the way back in 1974. Keep in mind, last year, they lost 105-77 to Luca Garza and the Iowa Hawkeyes. A reversal of fortune in Iowa tonight. Well, I'll tell you another thing. Last year, Penn State got spanked. Isaiah Brockington lost to this team as a member of the Nittany Lions. And not that he needed to exact revenge. It's a whole nother ball game, but he certainly showed why he's good enough to play in the Big Ten and the Big 12. Brockington now has 29, one off his career high, which he pulled that trick a couple weeks ago up in Brooklyn at the NIT tip-off. Twenty nine for Brockington a near triple double for freshman point guard Tyrese Hunter and a stifling defense by the Iowa State Cyclones has shut down the Iowa Hawkeyes tonight in the 75th iteration of the Cyhawk series. Clones have to get a shot up. What a night. College basketball back in Ames. And Hilton Coliseum, the faithful are in full throat now. And that'll do it from Hilton Coliseum. I don't know if it was magic or not, but the Iowa Hawkeyes got manhandled by the Iowa State Cyclones. The 17th ranked Cyclones remain undefeated and improved to 9-0 on the season. One of just eight teams with an unblemished mark in Division I college basketball.